In vitro fertilization in general is a very safe procedure. It was a procedure that was originally described in the late 70s and has progressively gotten better and safer um, with time. I think it's really important for people to understand that it's become a very common procedure and in the U.S. alone about one and a half percent of babies born in the U.S. are born after procedures like in vitro fertilization. Um, there are certain risks to in vitro fertilization, however. The first risk relates to stimulating the ovaries to make more than one egg or ovarian stimulation. Some women are at risk for over responding to the medications and making a lot of eggs. Um, when that happens, the estrogen levels can get very high, which is a hormone that um, women make when they're growing eggs, and that can make women sick with something called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. That is a rare problem, but um, it is something that we monitor women for throughout the process of in vitro fertilization with estradiol or estrogen levels, as well as ultrasounds to make sure that we're not overstimulating them. Other risks of in vitro fertilization are related to the egg retrieval procedure because it is a surgical procedure. Um, there is a needle that will pass through the vaginal wall and into the ovary to collect the eggs, and there's a very rare risk with that procedure of bleeding and infection, both of which are well under 1%. So they are rare, but they have been described. Um, finally, there, are the, there is the risk of multiple pregnancy, as I mentioned earlier. Women with multiple pregnancy, or twins, um, primarily have a higher risk of preterm birth and their babies um, having prematurity. So there are some risks related to that which we try to minimize as well. There's been a lot of questions about um, does ovarian stimulation increase the risk for certain types of cancers for example or does it increase the risk of birth defects in the offspring. Um, as far as we can tell, the risk of ovarian cancer being increased is very, very small and it is related to a non-invasive type of ovarian cancer called a borderline ovarian cancer and women who are at risk for that have um, had repeated ovarian stimulation. So I do not typically counsel patients that they are increasing their risk of cancer by going through the process of in vitro fertilization. The issue on birth defects has been very complicated and um, very intensely studied over many years, and it appears that infertile couples in general, just by being infertile, do have a slightly increased risk of having a child with a birth defect as compared to couples who are not infertile. And it's probably something about the genetics leading to the infertility. In vitro fertilization itself does not appear to significantly increase that risk over other infertile couples, but certain procedures in IVF may be related to a slightly increased risk of birth defects, and those are um, specifics that you would discuss with your physician at your visit to see if they applied to you. The success rate of IVF has steadily gotten better over time, as I mentioned previously, and is highly dependent on the age of the woman undergoing IVF. Um, the age of the man has very little influence actually on the success of IVF. So in young women, reproductively young women, which we would consider women under the age of 35, the IVF success rates approach a 50% pregnancy rate with a between a 40 and 45% live birth rate nationally. That number will go down as the woman ages. In older women who are over the age of 42, for example, undergoing IVF, success rates are quite low if that woman is using her own egg and are actually reported nationally to be under 5% for that particular age group. Um, in those women, we have a very honest discussion about the potential use of donor oocytes, which you've probably heard about in other um, interviews, and women who are in their early 40s um, or even up to 50 can have excellent pregnancy rates exceeding 50% with the use of donor eggs, even with carrying the pregnancy themselves. The process of IVF occurs typically over um, about a two week period where you take the medications to stimulate the growth of eggs on the ovaries. On average, that takes about 10 days of injections. And then you have the egg retrieval two days after your last injections. Um, and the embryo transfer is done between three and five days after the egg retrieval. So the whole process together takes about two weeks.